Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another episode of After the Buzzer, the show where I recap the NBA games from the night. Real quick, want to apologize if the video is short, if I sound weird, if there's a bunch of breaks because I need to cough. I'm sick again. I know I get sick a lot. It seems like every time I travel, I come back with something. So I'm not feeling too well. Trying to push through for this video because we had a really fun slate of games and a topic that I really want to talk about dealing with the Golden State Warriors, a team that's been dealing with a lot of turmoil over there this season. And one guy in particular has probably just earned himself a lengthy suspension. And it's not the first time even this season that that's happened. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about all these games. So let's go ahead and get into it. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. And as always, I'd love to hear your takeaways down below in the comments. So let's go ahead and start things off with Warriors versus Suns, which was a really fun game. It was supposed to be the debut of the big three. You know, Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, who still have not yet played together. Although tonight, as I'm recording and uploading this video on Wednesday, December 13th, they're supposed to. So fingers crossed they actually do. But you didn't have Kevin Durant in this one, Bradley Beal and Devin Booker playing together for the first time. And it came down to the wire. The Warriors were up big in, I think, the second or the third quarter. The Suns went up big, and the Warriors made a furious comeback late in the fourth, with the Suns being up 13 with four minutes to go. And the Warriors stepped up, mainly their role players. Jonathan Kuminga, who got the nod over Andrew Wiggins down the stretch, had some buckets. Podjemski, who got the nod over Clay actually late in the game, which is surprising. Steve Kerr almost always sticks with his vets. I'm actually pleasantly surprised that he went ahead and went to these young guys, because they were balling. Pazemski hit a number of big shots, cut the lead to one at one point. Devin Booker hit some free throws, and with 15 seconds left, Steph Curry had a chance to go ahead and tie the game, and he missed a tough three. It was one that he kind of rushed up because he didn't want to get fouled, and the Warriors fall just short of the comeback. But all in all, I don't think it's the worst game for the Warriors to lose. Even without Kevin Durant, the Suns team is pretty good. They were on the road, and... I think it's a step in the right direction that Steve Kerr went with the young guys over the struggling vets. He showed that, hey, I'm going to hold guys accountable. And I think that's good because that's something he needs to do for this team to be the best version of themselves and find their footing in what has been a really shaky season so far. As for the Suns, they go ahead and get a win without Kevin Durant. And it seems like tonight we might finally get the debut of this big three. But the main storyline coming out of this game isn't the fact that Steve Kerr benched his vets and what it could mean for Clay and Wiggins down the line. Maybe this is a turning point where the Warriors go more towards their youth. The main storyline isn't the fact that the Suns got another win without a member of their big three, showing that when they finally get them all together, this team could be absolutely terrifying. No, the big storyline coming out of this game is Draymond Green, because less than a month after he put Rudy Gobert in a headlock and got himself suspended for five games, Draymond Green is probably going to get suspended again after an incident in this game, and this suspension will very likely be even longer than that one. In the third quarter with the Warriors up five, Yusuf Nurkic kind of grabbed at Draymond. I guess it was probably a foul that they didn't call, but even still, Draymond decides to respond to this very ticky-tack foul call that he doesn't get by whipping around and hitting Yusuf Nurkic with a 180 slap to the face, the most unnatural motion you've ever seen, knocking him down for a bit, hitting him really hard in the process, and earning himself a flagrant two alongside an ejection from the game, a game that ended up being a three-point loss, one that maybe he could have helped the Warriors avoid if he didn't get himself tossed with plenty of time to play in the third quarter going into the fourth. After the game, Draymond Green tried to say it was an accident, that he was trying to sell the foul. I don't know about y'all, but I've personally never seen a flagrant flop before. This would be the first one. And the motion looked anything but natural. It looked like he was trying to hit him or he was trying to throw his arms in. Regardless, it didn't seem accidental. And I'm not ready to give Draymond Green, out of all people, the benefit of the doubt because this isn't even the first time he's been ejected for something like this this season. The Rudy Gobert thing happened less than a month ago. It hasn't been a month since he put Rudy Gobert in a chokehold and got suspended. He's been ejected three times so far this season in just 15 games that he's played. So he's getting ejected once per five games at this point. And he's probably not going to play for a little while because according to Woj, he expects the league to hand Draymond a decently lengthy suspension coming off of this. And I don't blame them because after the first suspension, they said he had a history and it's clear that he didn't learn anything from that first suspension because he came back and almost immediately did something very similar. And this is something the Warriors just can't afford. They have been bad so far this season. They're reeling at the moment. Clay is not playing well. Wiggins is struggling. Steph is trying to do everything on his own. They've dealt with injuries to Chris Paul to Gary Payton II. Like this Warriors team is kind of in danger of not even making the play-in if they continue to play this way and the rest of the Western Conference keeps things up. 
it's looking shaky over there for the dynasty. So they need everybody on the court. They need to avoid any extracurricular antics. They need to just get back to trying to play Warriors basketball. And if Draymond Green is consistently in and out of the lineup, whether he's getting ejected in a game or he's suspended, it's really hard to do that. And as much as Draymond Green isn't exactly the player he used to be, he's still good and he's still really important to this team. He's an important cog offensively with the way they run things, with his screening, with his passing. He's actually knocking down a decent clip of his threes this season. And defensively, he's still very very, very impactful. He's still easily the best defender on this team. They need him out there for both sides of the ball. But if he's going to keep getting himself suspended, how is this Warriors team ever going to find their rhythm? How are they going to win the games that he's getting ejected and suspended from? They lost by three points in this game. Maybe they win if he's playing. And the Wolves game he got himself ejected from, they lost by three. Maybe they win that one. During his suspension, they lost the Thunder in overtime. Maybe they win that one if Draymond Green is playing. They need one of their best players out there if they're going to be competitive. This isn't a team that can afford him to miss like half the season with suspensions. And obviously, this has been a problem far before this season. It just right now feels like it's kind of all coming to a head. Back in 2016, he kicked Steven Adams in the area you don't want to be kicked. He's a Thunder fan. I vividly remember that. He got suspended in the finals against the Cavaliers that year. At the beginning of last season, he punched his own teammate Jordan Poole in the face. And Poole hasn't really played well since that incident. The Warriors have had this weird feeling around them ever since that incident. They were a year off a championship. It felt like, hey, they've got a chance to go ahead and defend their title. And instead, were really shaky the entire season post that incident. Like, Last year in the playoffs, he jumped on DeMontis Sabonis' chest. He has been consistently doing things like this when he doesn't need to. He's a good player. I don't know why these things have to continue to happen. You don't have to hit guys in the face to get advantages. They could just be a good team. They've won multiple championships. Just play your ball. He's actively costing them games at this point. We'll see how long he's suspended, but... Woj said this is going to be a significant suspension is what he's thinking of, especially coming off of that five game one. I'm envisioning maybe like 15, 20, 25 games. I wouldn't be surprised if it went that far. There was some report going around on Twitter that it could be the rest of the season. I think there's absolutely no way they do that, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw between that 15 and 25 game range. And if that's the case over the time that he's gone, the Warriors are going to be in a really, really tough spot. It's hard to gauge what trades they need to make, what changes they need to make to their rotation, because clearly something has to give with how badly they've been been playing when you don't have Draymond out there. It's a disaster at the moment. It sucks even more because Draymond Green is genuinely a Hall of Fame talent. He's one of the best defenders of this era, one of the greatest defenders of all time. He overcame the odds as a second round pick, made his way onto the Warriors, and became a key cog, a glue guy on one of the best modern dynasties that we've seen. He was really important to everything they did. They needed him in those runs, and instead his legacy is probably going to be punching Jordan Poole in the face, having this incident against Nurkic, the Rudy Gobert chokehold, and things like that. When you take a look back at Draymond's career, this is probably what he's going to be more remembered for. And that sucks because it doesn't need to happen. Like he could just go out there and be the great defender that he is. He can get under people's skin without punching them in the face. And with the Gobert incident and this one coming less than a month apart, I just don't think it's going to change at all for the rest of his career. There's probably going to be more incidents like this as he goes into the twilight of his career. And there's going to be more things that people can take a look at after he retires to point to rather than his all-time great defense. With the way the Warriors are going, you kind of have to think how much more they're willing to put up with because they were able to put up with Draymond Green's antics when they were winning. They say that winning cures everything. And yeah, he was doing a lot of crazy stuff when they were winning championships, but now they're not a very good team. So when do the Warriors and Steve Kerr in particular say, enough's enough, stop doing this, or we're going to stop playing you, or we're going to consider trading you or something like that. I don't know if they would actually do that because they just signed into a contract this offseason, but if he's actively costing you games like this, how long do you go before you say enough's enough? Again, I think the league's probably going to suspend him. I wouldn't be surprised if it was up towards that 25 game mark. And it's just another moment where Draymond Green does something that hurts the Warriors. And it feels like it's a trend that's probably going to continue happening. I know Warriors fans are getting fed up. I talked with a couple of my friends who are Dubs fans and they said they're completely over this. I've seen people on Twitter say to trade Draymond Green, cut him, just get him away from this team because this consistently keeps happening, which is, again... It sucks because he was one of the most important pieces to their title runs, and instead, this is going to end up being his legacy, and he'll probably keep costing the Warriors games. Let's go ahead now and quickly run through the rest of these games. Mavs Lakers faced off, and there were some great performances. LeBron had 33, 8, and 9. Anthony Davis had 37 and 11. Austin Reese had 22, 5, and 8. Luca, the dad powers continue to boost him up 33 points, 6 boards, and 17 dimes. Tim Hardaway Jr. building his sixth man of the year case at 32 points, three rebounds, and three assists. Like all these guys balled, but the big story of this game 
was Dante Exum. Out of everybody in a 2023 matchup between the Lakers and the Mavericks, Dante Exum was the hero because the Mavericks go on to win this one, and Dante Exum was the reason why. He had 17 fourth quarter points, including hitting five of his seven threes in the fourth quarter, and he had a personal eight-point run to help them stave off a Lakers comeback, and he hit the dagger three with 53 seconds left. They kept leaving him open. They eventually started to close up, but for the most part, were letting him shoot, and Dante was making them pay time and time again. They picked him up this summer after he played overseas, kind of being a bust after the Jazz looked at him highly in the draft earlier in the 2010s, and Dante Exum has found a role here in Dallas. I've been really impressed by him so far. Kind of consider making a video about him in particular. So if you want to see that, let me know down below. But yeah, it's super cool to see him kind of finding this new niche in Dallas and helping them win, taking down the Lakers without Kyrie Irving, a big dub for Dallas. Nuggets versus Bulls also featured an ejection. Nicole Jokic gets kicked out for seemingly doing nothing other than talking to the referee. I guess maybe he said something that the ref didn't like, but this just feels like another quick trigger tech that we've seen a number of times throughout the season. Hate to see it because this is the only time that the Joker is going to play in Chicago this year. And apparently it was Serbian Heritage Night as well. So just... I don't like it. I feel like the ref kind of took power into his own hands and ruined the Bulls fans' chances of seeing one of the best players in the league at the moment. But Denver still gets the win. Reggie Jackson, 25 points. Julian Strother, 16 points, continuing a good streak that he's on. Meanwhile, for Chicago, Kobe White has been so good this season, especially as of late since Zach Levine's been out. They've been winning more games. They've been more competitive. And a lot of that has been Kobe White. 27 points, four boards, eight assists. I think he's averaging right up around uh, 17 points per game this season. He's just 23 years old somehow. Feels like he could be a genuine piece the Bulls could build around for the future when they go towards this rebuild. And I'm happy that it feels like a young star type of player is actually emerging for the Bulls in the midst of this pretty down season. Celtics versus Cavs was a fun one. Boston wins a close game over Cleveland. It was a balanced effort. Jason Tatum 25-10-5. Jalen Brown 25 points. Porzingis 21-10-3. Derek White 17-4-4. Drew Holiday some great defense with double digit points. Just very impressed with this team across the board, especially their defense down the stretch. When the Celtics lock in, there is almost nothing you can do against that starting five. As for the Cavaliers, the guards led the way but didn't get much help. 29-6-3 from Spida and 26-2-7 from Darius Garland. They just weren't able to stop Boston down the stretch and a lot of that had to do with the absence of Evan Mobley. And finally, the Clippers blow out the Sacramento Kings winning by 30 points and they're on a hot streak. They've won 10 of their last 13 games, seem to have found their footing with this group and a lot of it has been the renaissance of Kawhi Leonard. He's again looking like one of the best players in the world and this one had 31 points, 4 rebounds and 3 assists. James Harden had 15 points, 6 rebounds and 7 dimes. Uh, Paul George did leave early with groin soreness, I believe it was. Hopefully everything's good with him because they really need him to continue this hot streak that they're on. I haven't seen any reports about if he'll miss time or not, but hopefully it was just a precautionary measure because this, again, was a blowout. As for the Kings, a rough game from De'Aaron Fox, just 14 points on 5 of 16 shooting. Sabonis had 15 and 10. You had 1 of 8 shooting from Kevin Herter. They just really didn't have it, and a lot of that was because the Clippers are starting to look a lot more locked in, and it seems like maybe the James Harden thing will end up working out after all. With all that being said, I appreciate you watching. Leave a like and subscribe. With all that being said, those are my thoughts on these games. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. We'll love to hear your takeaways down below from these games, as well as, of course, your thoughts on the whole Draymond Green situation. Do you think the Warriors should bench him a little bit till he kind of figures this thing out? Should they try and trade him? What moves should they make in general? And how long do you think the suspension is going to be? By the time this video comes out, we might know the suspension length. So if you know it already, don't cheat. Don't just drop the number down below, but I guess we'll see. Uh, but yeah. Appreciate y'all watching. As always, I'll see y'all later. Real one say it back.